Amiga from Commodore is one of the most versatile computers currently available with applications far beyond a mere games machine, right up to professional standard in graphics, image processing, desktop publishing and video. In this video we give you a glimpse of some of the applications, software and hardware in most common use. You will see that the Amiga is a versatile and powerful tool, with uses limited only by your own imagination. Richard Lockton, a full-time professional Amiga user in graphics, desktop publishing and video, is going to talk us through the different sections which feature live screenshots of the programs actually running on an Amiga. Let's take a look first of all at some graphics applications. Here the image of a fish is being scanned in 24-bit colour into Art Department Professional for final sizing, scaling and colour correction. Morph Plus, also from the makers of Art Department Professional, has some additional features. Here the girl's face is loaded and one of the many image operators selected. We're going to wrap the image around a sphere. The size and shape of the sphere is adjusted with simple slider controls. When we're happy with the position, a black and white preview is selected. If we're happy with that result, a full color image can now be rendered by first accepting the preview and then executing the image. And there's the result in full 24-bit color for saving to disk. Now let's load another image. We'll choose the perspective operator. And make the adjustment to the grid with the slider controls. Other controls are available to give further adjustment. A preview is selected. The program is seen running on an Amiga 3000 with the rendering taking place in real time. This gives you an idea of the speed of the program. Remember the preview can be aborted at any time. This abort facility is useful if you don't like the look of the image and allows you to make further adjustments. We accept the preview and the new image is rendered. A further image is loading now. Let's try the ripple effect this time. preview screen gives a representation of the ripple as a circle. Additional ripples can be added and cross interference ripples will form where they cross. The control panel can be temporarily removed to give a clear view of what is going on. The settings are accepted and the new image rendered. We've actually placed the swimmer underwater. This time 
a larger image is loaded. A picture such as this, with circular areas, is ideal to try the twirl operator. A black and white preview is shown. Here is the twirl area, which can be adjusted with the mouse or on the keyboard. I'm moving it to the bottom left-hand corner, to the clock face. I could just as easily have placed it up here. I'm using the keyboard to enter the values. Accept, and the black and white image is twirled in the area I defined. Accept and execute as usual. The full color image can now be rendered. see it coming up now in the bottom left hand corner and we've twirled the clock face another powerful image processing program is image master this also has many many powerful processing routines Let's try some. I've loaded the girl's face into the primary buffer. Image Master has lots of options. Melt, lined, relief, watercolor, posterize, etc. I'm choosing Make Shine. I'll define the area first, make some adjustments, and when I'm happy with those, the results are rendered. Put a sparkle in her eye. Now back to the unaltered image. This time I'm choosing the 3D net. I define the area. I'm happy with those. I'll just alter the net spacing. rendering takes place and the girl has a veil. Now back to the original plus a film strip. This can show you images in sequence for animations or morphing which we'll see later. This time I'm choosing the caricature effect. Film strip records my original image and the color image is transformed. Imagine doing this to your family and friends.
Now I'm doing a simple transitional morph. The two images are shown side by side and the film strip will record each frame. A true warp morph would be produced if I adjusted the red crosses over each of the original images. The picture on the right of the film strip is showing the changes now. The beauty of Image Master is you can actually see the morph taking place frame by frame. The program is doing all the work for you. I'm doing nothing at the keyboard or mouse now. Let's watch the program run. Now the morph is complete, we can view it by playing the film strip. Image Master can also warp morph to an incredibly high standard, as can ASDG's morph program, which we'll look at next. Let's morph an owl into a baby. First the project is opened and the images chosen from our hard disk. Images can also be uh, loaded from floppies. The options screen appears followed by the refresh image screen. I'm choosing high resolution. Now both images load. And are rendered. I can view both images at once by moving the slider halfway. The quality of a warp morph is dependent on the use of vectors to map one image to the other. I'm loading in vectors for the head and shoulders. Now I'll create vectors for the left eye. First I'll zoom in a bit. And then move the slider to view the owl. 
A new vector is selected. And I'll position it just above the left eye. Make an adjustment. And now add more vectors using a keyboard shortcut. About eight or ten should be enough. Now I'll move the slider to view the image of the baby. And position the end of those vectors that I placed over the owl's eye over the top of the baby's eye. Now I can select that group of vectors together and save them. This means if I want to repeat them off, I can call those up quickly and make the adjustments without having to redraw them all. Enter the name of the vector group at the keyboard. I'm calling them left eye. Now we'll do the right eye. Exactly the same process. Choose a new vector. Position it over the right eye and adjust it. And repeat it just as before. This is done using a keyboard shortcut. Now move the slider to view the owl. And I can move the image of the owl across the screen so I get a more accurate view of it. And then adjust the, the tail end of the vectors above the owl's eye. Now select the right eye vectors as a group and save them. The crestor pops up and at the keyboard type in right eye. Back to normal size. You can see all our vectors positioned. Return to the options screen to set the number of frames over which the morph will take place. I'm going for 10 on this occasion. Uh, generally speaking, the more frames you choose, the smoother the morph is going to be. Check that we're in high resolution. And make the other adjustments that you require. Finally, I accept from the main screen and the morph will take place. Here we are viewing the result in ping pong mode in D-Paint 4. has a film strip feature called Fred, which can be used for previewing morphs in real time. Here, two logos have been morphed. And here it is in D-Paint again.
Now we'll switch to some desktop publishing applications, an area in which the Amiga is now fully supported by some excellent software. Here I'm using Art Expressions BME to trace a bitmapped logo screen. Sample rate and curve fit are adjusted. And the noise filter to exclude all stray pixels. In this case, the image is black and white. The trace takes place. and is saved as a DR2D file. I've also got the main art expression program running, so I'll import the DR2D file now as an object. Because the image is now an object, I can change the outline and the fill colors at will. We'll keep the outline as a black line, but we'll change the fill color to red. zoom in and because the image is an object we can also resize it distort it and even rotate it but it doesn't end there I can save this new version of the image once more as a DR2D file I also have PageStream running and I can import that image now into PageStream there it is and I'll quickly do a rough up of a page Define a column area for text. I'll import the text as an ASCII text file, if I can find it. There it is. And the column should fill up with text for me. Of course, I could change the font or style or color at any point now. We'll add another text object, though. Choose the font, the style, and the size. Doesn't really matter, because I can resize it anyway when I've typed it in. Just grab the corner and drag it up. Okay, we'll change the color. And reposition it. Make it a bit wider.
Finally, I'll import the fish that you saw being scanned earlier on. The image appears in PageStream as a black and white image, but remember it will appear in full colour if you have a full colour printer. I'll resize the fish. Now at the moment, it's lying across the front of the logo, so I'll move the logo to the front. The versatile art expression program has many, many uses. I'll show you how easy it is to flow text around a shape. First we'll draw our shape. Just a simple squiggle, really. Now select the text tool. Choose the font. text will be entered as a string here. Choose a size and enter the text on the keyboard. Hit OK. The text now will appear as a blue box. There it is. You can resize it. Now by selecting the line I drew earlier, choose the appropriate tool again from the menu at the top. Some options there which I can choose. And my text now flows along the line program asks me if I want to erase the original text, which I do, and erase the original object. So we just have the text remaining. I group those separate letters into a group, and that's it. It's just as easy to drop text into a shape. Draw the shape. Move it if I want to. Select the text tool, enter the text at the keyboard, and position my blue box again. Now select my original object, and just as before, I can make that text fit into the shape. Erase the original text and the original object. And this time we'll change the colour as well. I'll just make it a bit wider. Move that down, make it gives a bit of room. Right, now we'll change the colour. as easy as that. Here, all these DTP programs are being used to produce an actual full-color leaflet. Color proofs are produced directly from the Amiga in PostScript via a Canon color laser copier. The storage of the large files involved is handled by an external optical disk drive with each three and a half inch disc having 128 megabytes capacity. The final job is sent off to the printers in film form. These are obtained from an image setting bureau to give the final printed result seen here.
Everything here has been produced on the Amiga. Word processing on the Amiga has been revolutionized with Final Copy 2 from Softwood Incorporated, the makers of PenPal. Final Copy 2 has many of the features of a full desktop publishing package to make it more than just a word processor. It is easy to use with traditional pull-down menus and intuitive controls to help you create good-looking documents. Text may be inserted or deleted easily. and font styles and sizes quickly changed. And a text color chosen from a large range. Graphics may be added by use of the drawing tools or imported as ILBM images. The graphics can be resized and repositioned. Now I'm importing the ILBM image. Which can also be resized. A speller is included, which can be added to. and a thesaurus may be used to find the best word for a given situation. Final Copy 2 is the word processor for the Amiga. With massive word processing power, spell checker, thesaurus, the ability to create and import graphics, easy document layout, with style sheets, and master pages. The use of outline fonts together with a postscript printer support gives superb output. Final Copy 2 gives truly professional results. Now we'll take a peek at Amiga applications in a professional broadcast standard video studio. The three machine edit suite shown here, full component throughout, uses Panasonic M2 machines, a Panasonic AG800 editing controller, Soundcraft 200 BVE 8-channel audio mixer for combining live sound, music and voiceover. And an audio sound sampler linked to the Amiga. 
The digital effects are achieved using a cell P152B touchscreen controller driving two P164 effects channels. We'll have a look at some examples. Solarization and mirror image. Some more solarization. Slow motion can be enhanced with strobe effect. Here three video channels are in use, plus the fish effect with drop shadows. Now still video is combined with a logo scanned into Art Department Professional on the Amiga then slow motion live action. The Flymax logo has also been used in PageStream to produce packaging and promotional material. This demonstrates the multi-talented Amiga at work. Here, a solarized still with logo again, and then to live action. The images from the Amiga are combined with video via a Genlock and Kia. Here, the G2 Systems model is used, a full component unit. The G2 mixer produces crossphase between the Amiga and video channels or the full signal may be taken from the Amiga for dumping graphics and animations to tape. The background video channel removes the Amiga from the system. The key allows the Amiga to be keyed over live or still video. The ability to key Amiga pictures over video is particularly useful for titling. B-Titler 2 software is extensively used. A large range of fonts can be chosen and sizes, together with a shadow, outline, and color. We'll enter some text on the screen. Spacing can be altered. And a range of additional effects such as underlining can be added. Line and page effects are chosen from extensive menus. And the progress of each page is shown. Here the full range of page effects is displayed. Duration and delay for each effect can be chosen. The on-screen palette allows us to alter colors at will. And there's the effect. 
against the video this time. Now we'll select a new page and enter some more text. The ability to enter text while viewing the picture is very useful. Now we'll play the full effect. We'll make an adjustment now to the second page effect and play the full sequence. To really see what this program will do, we'll have a look now at the demo. In a tape such as this, we can only give a glimpse of what the Amiga is capable of in the video studio. Remember, many of the digital effects can be reproduced using Amiga animation programs such as D-Paint and a basic Amiga. You don't need to spend a fortune to achieve superb results. This is real 3D in action. Here are animations played in Scala, showing insect life cycles. Simple animations such as these, of only a few repeated frames, can be very effective. Here a 
D-paint animation is combined with ray-traced water surface from real 3D. D-paint again, this time keyed over live action. And here's a D-paint tip. This clever technique can be used to create TV style effects in creating a slideshow. In addition to a page turn, the same idea could be used to perform other reveal effects. We'll begin by selecting a color from the palette and filling the screen. Next, we'll choose a darker color from the palette and one of the larger brushes, then the curve tool. We'll drag a curve out to represent the bottom edge of the page curled up. We'll then drag the right hand edge of the page curled. Now using the straight line tool, we'll draw the edge of the curl. We now have a simple line drawing looking like a page turn. We'll fill the back of the front page with gray. Next, we'll choose pink and fill the area that represents our second page. We'll now swap to D-Paint spare page and choosing the same color we initially used, clear the screen. From the Anim menu, set number of frames to 20. Pick up the entire screen as a brush. This will give you simply a solid blue area. Choose color and pink. Bring up the line spacing requester and choose end total, making sure that its value is set to 20. Choose brush, handle, corner, so you're holding the brush by its corner. Use Alt-X to select which corner you're holding it by. From the lower right-hand corner of the screen to the upper right corner, drag a line while holding the Alt key. D-Paint will then stamp the pink rectangle, gradually increasing in size from the lower right to the upper left edge of the screen. Shift 2, we jump to the last frame in the animation and bring up the Add Frames requester. We'll add an additional 20 frames. When we play the animation back, it looks like a pink square expanding. We'll now jump back to our picture of the curled page and pick it up as a brush. We'll use the J key to return to our animation and bring up the fill type requester. From here, we'll choose brush. Turn off the menu in toolbox and point to the lower right hand corner. If we begin filling from the lower corner by holding the Alt key, we see Deluxe Paint resizes our brush each time to fill the pink square. It will take some time for Deluxe Paint to do the entire animation. Now that completes the first half of our animation. Now to complete the animation. We'll choose line and drag a line with our custom brush from the lower right corner to the upper left hand corner while holding the Alt key. 
D-Paint will drag our brush out of view. If we now play back this animation, we can see it looks like a blue page revealing a pink page. We'll now want to apply a picture to each of those colors. We'll first load a background from the art disk called Aquarium Background. Since he's used a different color palette, we'll need to remap it. First, we'll restore our original palette and then choose Remap. We'll use the J key to return to our animation. From here, choose the background color to be light blue. From spare, choose merge in back and all frames. Deluxe Paint will then merge the aquarium background onto all areas that were light blue within the animation. This too could take several moments. Now to apply a picture to the pink area. We'll return to our spare page again and this time load a different background such as Venus. She too will need to be remapped. Once again choose palette, restore palette and then remap. We'll jump back to the animation and use the same technique as before. Using the 2 key we advance a couple of frames to reveal the pink and then select that pink as our background color. Choose merge in back and select all frames. Venus is now mapped onto the second page. Play this animation back in ping pong fashion, it appears as if the aquarium background is being peeled off and replaced back over Venus. Try using this merge in back technique with your own pictures and wipe effects. This has been just a taste of Amiga applications and is intended to provide inspiration for those of you devoted to the Amiga. We hope this tape helps you to use your Amiga to its full potential. Remember, for actual how-to advice and instruction on particular aspects, the Amiga Video Collection library of tapes is available, all reasonably priced and crammed with tips from the professionals, all those tricks of the trade that are not to be found in the manual. Contact us at this address or phone our 24-hour hotline. The Amiga Video Collection, an invaluable instructional and informative collection of videos made by Amiga users for Amiga users.